Now, when this railway station was first built in 1876, it was in West Riding of Yorkshire. Now, in the 70s, they moved the borders around and now this station is here in Cumbria, where I start my journey walking across a disused line, taking me back into the border of Yorkshire. This junction, known as Hulls Junction, still features a live railway viaduct across the Settle and Carlisle railway line called Moorcock or Dan Dry Mere. Going along the disused Hulls branch line, this still holds on to an abandoned railway tunnel and two railway viaducts. So the branch line starts here at a railway station called Garsdale, which is a Midland Railway Company station designed by the engineer John Holloway Saunders, opening on the 1st of August 1876. The grounds had a turntable and it inspired a particular author with an event that happened in 1900 with very strong winds turning the locomotives around freely. Hence the book was written, Tenders and Turntables by who else? The very famous Troublesome Engines by Reverend W. Audrey. He had the highest water troughs in England, feeding the thirsty London to Scotland Express trains, climbing over the steep gradients passing his Midland Railway signal box from 1910. Built with wood and Welsh slate for its roof, this Grey II listed structure controls the train movements at this junction as the railway branched off east to Hawes along the single line to a now abandoned railway tunnel. Right, slight change in weather but I think we'll be all right. That just through there, that's the Hawes branch line going off to the village of Hawes from Garsdale. This is the Dandrymere viaduct that carries the Settle and Carlisle railway line. Now that's a live viaduct, real trains run on that one. But just over there is the track bed to the railway line itself that I'm gonna try and follow and try and pick out some of its best features. There you go. That's not a bad spot actually. You can just see where the line came along this area here from Garsdale Station as it hands off in that direction to a horse. Flat trap bed. Very flat. Rabbit eaten <laughs> with the warrens. There's a wall on this side, it seems to be fenced off, and the other side it doesn't. You have to be careful to make sure it's not private land. But I think. I could possibly carry on a bit further in this direction uh, to show the rest of the line before I might have to retreat to the car and then cheat a little bit and drive around. That's, that's quite a good view, that good spot. I 
quite often on disused railway lines you know and then you come across what's a plate layers hut somewhere for the uh, the railway workers to hide keep warm with that little fire have something to eat especially when the weather was grim and it was their job to walk along the line and make sure it was maintained and looked after now we have very sophisticated measurement trains test trains that network rail use but that's most certainly something to do with the railway Okay, this is the first major structure on the line. This is Moorcroft Tunnel, which as you can see is a, a single lined tunnel coming from Garsdale to Hawes. It looks very foreboding. It's got bits of clutter and things in there. I'm not too sure if I can possibly go in. So like many tunnels of this sort of design, quite often you'll see little refuse points where the railway workers could hide if a train was coming through the tunnel. It's not a long tunnel by any stretch of the imagination, but there seems to be uh, some farm machinery that have been stored in here. If you do stumble across or find a tunnel, always make sure there's good ventilation. You can see the end of the tunnel just down here. It's a good airflow coming through. Well, that's no good, is it? All that, the tunnel's collapsed inside. That big boulder's come down. I've been checking the rest of the roof around this inside here seems quite safe but if that isn't a sign to get out I don't know what isn't that's a lot of earth that's come down inside this tunnel I think it's time for me to get myself out of here very very quick It's definitely not a safe tunnel to be venturing into. Uh, no, no. There's lots of bricks and stones that are becoming loose and it's not a good idea to continue. So, we can move on to our next feature. But this stretch along here going to Halls was built by the Midland Line in 1878. And it was to meet the North Eastern Railway at Halls, which isn't too far from here now, down the line. Now the route itself was quite demanding, costing about £40,000 back then per mile. And now with this tunnel being built, it's got lovely masonry portals at either side. But I believe they had real bad problems with the drainage. It was such a, an issue when they're constructing this tunnel. It's brick lined with plate layers, refuges in there in both the walls. And then this line then continues off to the first viaduct, which I'm looking forward to seeing. But as regards to tunnels going, this obviously clearly still has some drainage issues and it's moved. You can see across here that this structure wants to come down. They could be in followed. <laughs> so, this here now is Mossdale Viaduct, beside an old lime kiln, which is not far from the abandoned quarry. Mossdale Gill Viaduct is about 78 yards long at 40 feet high, with four arches built from June 1876, and they finished it in February 1878. I have nothing for them.
you know, this is the most scenic, ideal little spot just to find this four arched viaduct in northern Yorkshire. It's amazing. Beside beautiful waterfall with its own private pool. Don't fancy a swim today. Uh, this is on private land, but uh, I've been given permission by some amazing locals, I can't mention any names, uh, gave me the directions on the private road, so it's not really accessible, but it's great to be able to share this experience with you and show you a viaduct that rarely gets seen, waterfalls, an upper one, a low one that rarely gets seen. And I believe there's a kiln round here as well, it's assumed that the kiln may have been used beside this beck um, for the mortar of the viaduct and building the railway line. But one of the best features is definitely just this viaduct that's next to the Mosshead Falls, which is a pair of waterfalls either side of Mossdale Viaduct. The lower falls are accessible via public right of way across in over the beck, but this 20 foot high upper fall with the beautiful sunshine glistening it is a little bit more magnificent and uh, it's found off the beaten track underneath I think one of the country's one of the most perfect little viaduct spots Onto halls the main line meanders over hidden viaducts south of the village called Apperset Designed by J.S. Crosley, who designed Ribblehead Viaduct on the Settle and Carlisle line, this Grade 2 listed 5 arch viaduct is 108 yards long at 56 feet above Whittlebeck, now used for abseiling by the local outdoor centre. No train services today at Hall Station, but the station still remains, with a steam train on the platform with carriages, albeit now a local museum. However, these viaducts may be in use once more again in the future after its official closure in 1959. So after a public meeting in 2018, the group named the Upper Wensleydale Railway would love to reopen this branch line to halls and run trains once more to Garsdale. That would be an absolute grand sight to see, especially past these waterfalls and I wish them very well for their project. But for now, I think it would be a bit rude to sit down and enjoy a little bit of mother nature. <laughs> 